What's up guys, welcome to Arisar's Life. In this episode, I wanna ask you guys, is there enough room for everyone to resell and make a profit? Uh, thank you so much for joining me. This is a live stream. Let me know in the comment section if you cannot hear me, but let's just get straight into it. Um, I think everything is working, so let's just get into it. So I wanna ask if you feel um, that there's enough room for everyone to resell. Actually, it says here the stream is, is weak. Let me know in the chat if it is weak or not. Um, hopefully you guys can see me okay. If not, then um, I will restart in a moment. But I wanna ask you guys, let me know in the comment section if you think that there's enough, okay, Ali says that we're good, so let's get into it. Is there enough room for everyone to resell? Now, I say that yes and no. Um, if you're talking about the category of new or pre-owned shoes, as an example, um, there is room for everyone. Um, if we're talking about a specific SKU, this is a Travis Scott Air Jordan 6. I feel like if there were 10 times as many of these in the for sale, that the market would tank close to retail. If there were a thousand of these in the market, then I wouldn't even be able to get retail for them, uh, depending on the market. So I don't know what you guys think um, when it comes to, can, is there enough room for everyone to resell in our market today? And what do you guys think? I'm gonna share my personal goals with you guys. Let me know what you think. Personally, I am moving towards the skill of online arbitrage. If I were to ask you guys, what do you wanna get really good at in the next five years? For me, I want it to be online arbitrage. That means finding a deal online or finding underpriced stuff, uh, maybe from a reseller who's given up and they wanna sell me their inventory or I'm looking online at specifically in the shoe market because this is the category that I wanna sell in. I find a pair of shoes that sells for 150, somebody's desperate, buy it for 90, resell it, get the $20 profit I'm looking for and move on, right? That is the, um, for me, that's the objective is to have 100% online arbitrage. That's the skill that I wanna get in. Now, I can't share my buy list because the markets that I'm selling in is too competitive. If I were to tell people the exact SKUs I'm looking for, it wouldn't work. Um, but I can show you guys how to resell in shoes, but you have to find your own SKUs, right? And there's millions of different shoes for sale. I just can't share the exact ones that I'm selling with you. It doesn't work. So I'm really curious what you guys are thinking. Cicely says I have a nice haircut. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't comb my hair, but... Um, Let's see. You would say it really, it's really item and category specific. specific. I agree. I think it's um, very, very specific and very important to recognize that not everybody can make it. Um, this is kind of, I don't know. I don't want to be Debbie Downer. I think that everyone can make it, but to, to a different degree. I'm going to give you guys an example. Um, I just came back from um, New York City. What's up, Tanya? Thrifty Treasures. And um, I went to Flushing. Flushing is really awesome, guys. I haven't been there in a long time. There are probably a thousand restaurants in just a few blocks. It's insane. There are multiple malls of tons and tons and tons of restaurants, all mom and pop. Now, here's the thing. Most of the people eat at only a few of the restaurants. There's a lot of restaurants there, but all the people eat at only a few. And there's more trends than that. The, the places that are really busy usually are also the cheapest, so oddly enough, they have, they have found a product market fit, something that people want to buy and eat over, over and over again. Um, and it's also the cheapest. So it's also the most economical option on top of maybe being the best tasting. Almost, it was almost an inverse relationship. You guys saw those, those lamb chops that I ate were $27. Um, there was only like four people eating that. But the um, the soup dumplings that I showed in the second picture on my Instagram, there were, it was like an hour wait and people were ordering more than $20 worth at a time, but it was only about $7 per order. So it was the cheapest item like in the whole plaza, but the line was insane. So kind of blows my mind because all these restaurants, but people are only eating at a few and the category matters. So cheapest, was usually busy. Cheapest was busy. Great tasting, the most busy. Okay, so the, the best tasting, no matter how long the wait was, was always the busiest. Fast was always busy. In that area there, I think there are three McDonald's just in one, in one block. 
That's like how many people are there eating. I, I, I miss New York so much, guys. It's, it was awesome living there. And I just, I love the hustle. I love like how, how hard it is to survive there. If you guys have an opportunity in your life to move to New York and try to live there like a local, um, it's amazing. I actually think it's cheaper to live there than the Bay Area, actually, because you don't need a car. You can definitely get around, but with, with public transportation, and they don't gouge poor people like they do here. Here, they, they charge you per stop on the subway. So if you live really far away because you can't afford rent really close, you pay a ridiculous transportation cost. You can pay $30 round trip to go to work and come back. But if you're rich and you live near work, it's like $2 to use the subway. But in New York, it's the opposite. Um, it's two seventy five, no matter how far you go. So you could rent a room way away from the city, commute to the city, and try to crush it. I just really respect that city. It's super dope. Um, Luciano is saying there's room for everyone when the Asian sellers vanish. Maybe, maybe, because, and that's sort of an unfair government advantage because they get that that cheap shipping hack. But from, from my understanding, Trump is getting rid of that. So I do think it'll be more, more even. What's up, Thrifting Lounge? Um, hey, how's married life treating you? Fantastic. It's because I have a lot more pressure on me now because I'm not by myself anymore and I can't just dick around all day. I have to, to like actually pay attention because I have more than one person to take care of. And if we decide to have kids, which we probably are, now I really can't mess around because I don't want to be a bad parent. That's like my top thing. Um, and the way I look at that is, my parents were never really around. I'm not complaining about my parents. They're totally, they did the best they could, but they weren't here. I would have much appreciated having parents that were actually around. I'm watching this show called um, Working Moms. Let me know in the comment section if you guys have seen this before or not. And in the show, this lady is really trying to be a career woman and she's at this marketing meeting and this, this guy makes a really offhand joke and says, has your kids started calling the nanny mommy yet, right? And uh, it makes the lady cry. It's, it's, it's really harsh, right? But it's kind of like this thing, working class. Like I, get, I got an email that said, Chris, I want to be a part-time mom and a full-time reseller. And like, obviously that's kind of a funky way to word it. But like, it, I, I get it. Trying to build your own business is really cool, but it's very, you know, it's kind of scary. So getting that, that amount of work in is tough, but the reason I, I need to backtrack a bit where I was going, sorry for the long about way of saying it, but I called the people that took care of me, mom and dad, straight away. I, I remember calling my daycare people, hey mom, hey dad, even though they're not actually my parents, I just got used to it. I just was only around them. Both my parents worked the entire time. I did not know them. So I'm not complaining because I grew up perfectly middle class. I wasn't abused. When I listen to some ridiculous stories coming in, when people are like, I, I'm in an abusive household, I can't leave. Like abusive, non-supportive partner and you don't know how to make money, that is a horrible situation. I can't even compare to that. Okay, that's insane. Um, but that show made me realize, okay, you want you, and, and of course my audience is like 75% women. They want to earn extra side money, but they also need to be a mom. That's really a lot of pressure on me. So personally, that's why I don't think it's okay to just resell to, to make enough money to get by. Try to think a little bit bigger. Think like, I want a couple of staff. I want a little bit of a bigger operation. That way you can actually have some time to spend with your family. This is really important, guys. And I think you should smash the like button because I don't hear resellers talking about this. If you become a reseller, legit, your income varies. I don't have an actual job right now. I'm doing a basically online business, right? I've got a YouTube channel, I have Patreon, I have rental cars, I have real estate, I have stocks. I'm trying all this different stuff to try to cobble together an income, but I can tell you for sure, since I started selling full-time, my income has never been the same. Not one time each month is it exactly the same. It's within a range, but it's not the same. And I wish I could tell people that, hey, if you make $1,000 a week, you're not ready to quit your job and resell full time. You're not even close to that, okay? You, you just did it one time. And if you resell and you only do it husband and wife or yourself and you take a break, your business takes a break, okay? That, that's crazy okay like when if you if you have a regular nine to five job usually you get at least one week paid vacation where you can go somewhere and you still get paid right uh, i know that that's 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 tough to hear but most people that do really well 
if you were to knock on the millionaire's row, like, what do you do? It, most of them have a really good job. They're not an entrepreneur. Unless they started off as a really good career and they put that money into real estate or they buy, you know, a bunch of fried chicken shops or something, and that's the way they go. Um, I think Zahir is here. He, he, I think he's in the UK. That's like one of my favorite places. I would definitely relocate there just because I really love London. I, I really like... Um, Europe because, I don't know, I I feel like they understand mental health more than the US. That's one of my tips in my previous videos that people are not taking care of themselves. I'm doing reseller meetups all the time. People are not healthy. They're not getting enough sleep. They're working on their businesses way too long. They never take any vacation. They don't make enough money. They don't spend any time with friends and family. When you become a reseller, the most common thing that disappears is the time with your friends and family and the time for self-care. That goes away immediately. If you start trying to run your own business, stop taking care of yourself, stop taking care of your family and friends. So, you know, I joined a $500 a month mastermind call one time. And um, this is the, the, the theme was, Chris, I'm super rich, but I go home to a family. I go home to a house full of strangers. And I was like, Ugh, you know, that, that sucks. Like, is that the true cost of, of earning seven figures and above is that you can't know your family, right? So I just think it's, it's tough. In Europe, I feel like, like in the summer, a lot of people take three weeks off. In the United States, I've never taken a vacation longer than two weeks. Let me know in the chat how many, how long your longest vacation is, but it's not uncommon in Europe to take a month vacation. Like that's unheard of in the United States. People just, they really don't take care of themselves. Um, Bridget is saying reselling allows her to drop what what she's doing and be with her kids. Agreed. Um, I just think here's the thing though. I don't know how to, how to help um, a working mom precisely. Okay. I know that my top recommendation is the same as hustle at home. Mom, Ashley, I consider Ashley a really good friend. I ask her a lot of questions on how to do this because she can relate to my audience much better than I can. Right? So we have agreed, or I mean, I'm not going to put words in her mouth, but I think the best reselling model is to keep your expenses really, really low. Try to make two to five grand doing everything at home. If you are a mom, that would be my top recommendation, right? Do the best you can at home. Keep expenses really low. Um, probably photograph when you have time and list throughout the day whenever you have a break. That's probably the best you can do. Try to keep sourcing the two days or less and try to keep your profit margin high. Don't be the list a bunch of items every day type of mom because then maybe you don't actually get to spend time with your kids when you do it that way. Again, I'm not a mom. I can't speak for that, but I'm just saying from my experience talking to people, I would recommend 10 to 20 hours, try to make two to five grand a month, really hyper-focused sourcing. What's up, Randy? BG says most resellers are fat. I think that comes from how hard it is to resell because it's just a lot of stuff. In my previous video, that's actually my video that's uploading right now, I talk about the fact that when you resell, okay, when you have a nine to five, let me know if you guys agree, smash the like button. This is, I guarantee you this is true. When you work a nine to five, right? You're, you get fired if you don't show up on time and, or if you, and if you leave early. You're required to be there 40 hours a week and you have a minimum production value. You have to do this or you get fired. But when you're a reseller, you have to do every job, right? And there's at least two jobs in your resale business when it comes to, and usually these are the two jobs you suck at, keeping track of how much money you actually make and doing the proper research to see if an item is, is actually gonna sell. Those are the two most important jobs. How much money do you actually net? And then is it actually going to sell? That's 90% of reselling. Most people, if that was your job, you would be fired, right? So if you're just honest with yourself, that's totally cool. I don't like bookkeeping. I've outsourced it. I don't like listing. I don't do the listing. I was listening to Mr. Beast, who has the largest YouTube channel. He's spending 400 grand an episode. I learned amazing things from this 20 year old reseller. He spends 50 hours a week coming up with the video concept and that's it. That's it. He doesn't do anything else. No editing, no filming, nothing. Just coming up with the video. So if you were a reseller, 50 hours of finding one product to sell, focused finding it. Imagine how good that product would be. It'd be amazing. 
if you spend 50 hours trying to find one thing, it'd probably be, I figured out how to sell Oreos from a distributor and I got the contract done. If you had 50 hours to spend on just doing one thing, right? Or 50 hours of looking through thrift stores and antique shops, if somehow you could earn thousands of dollars for that amazing find, then it might be worth it. Now, that does actually apply in reselling. It's just that some of that stuff is very expensive. It might be cars or jewelry or watches if you want to earn the thousands of dollars per item. That's, that's not super easy. But again, if you had 50 hours to do that and you outsourced everything else, that's the best use of your time. Um, so here saying he put on weight since reselling at home. It used to be thinner. Yes. So again, Another tip is your schedule, right? For me, um, since being married, I have definitely, I gained weight the first month. The first month, all we did was eat Netflix and ice, ice cream every single day the first month I was married. And the first day I lost the ring. So like I, I, I was totally not used to um, being married. I hated the ring as soon as I put it on. I'm like, I never wear jewelry. Um, and I lost it. The, the, like the first, we, we, we got married, the next day for lunch, I lost it. Uh, I left it at home. We had to drive home, and she's like, how's the ring feeling? And I'm like, I don't have it. So anyway, first month, we got into the habit of watching TV and um, eating ice cream every single day. It was so stressful trying to, like, um, she's going through a big work change. I'm trying to maximize my, my reselling for Q4, and we decided to get married on September 1st, right? So... The first month, we, I gained a ton of weight. After that, we signed up for a 10K race, um, which is in three weeks. So we've been working out at least once a day. Um, challenges are a good way for me to get onto it. I'm on social media way less, except for when I'm on vacation. Sometimes I like to post and share. Um, but our schedules are really strict now because I don't want to be fat. I want to be skinny. I want to be healthy. I want to be mobile, right? They say like um, most people, once they have a bad fall, they pretty much die. So I'm trying to do the best to improve my mobility. I don't want to be like that. So I'm really, really, really focused on that. Also, I want to actually be around for my kids. That's just what, like Pat Flynn. The most impressive thing about Pat Flynn, smart passive income guy, is that he and his wife walk his kids to school every day. That is incredible. Imagine the like somebody at that level of their career is earning one to two hundred dollars an hour. Walking your kids to work and back, that's like $500 in profit you could be making if you're working at your job. The fact that you're doing so well that you can do that, that's amazing, right? So shout out to Pat. He's, he's, he's killing it. I love that. Um, oh, Maya's saying, why didn't we live together before? Um, her family is like the, if you don't own a place, you can't get married. So it just took me a while to save enough money to do that. That's why we didn't live together. Um, because she's basically, she didn't want her to marry a deadbeat. So it took, it's just hard. And in the Bay Area, it takes a long time. We've been dating for eight years before we got married. That's a long time, long time. 20% depending on your gross. Sorry, so you need to re-ask the gross question. I missed it. Um, when does Q4 start as a reseller? For me, October 1st. Oh, this is great. Duncan is asking this is a really relevant question. And let me know in the comment section below if you guys are experiencing this as well. He's saying a lot of resellers right now are experiencing slow sales no matter what they do. That happened to me two years ago. The first year I was reselling, eBay made a bunch of changes and um, all my sales dipped like probably 60%. And that's when I changed my name. I used to be 10K on the Bay. And I was like, I do not want to be 10K on the Bay. I don't trust eBay. I need to sell on multiple platforms and really start understanding. And that's why that goal also went away. I don't want that many items. It's too risky. So I want a smaller focus, things that sell faster, smaller inventory. I'm okay with having a smaller store of more expensive stuff. That's the only way to solve it. If you start, if you're having an issue where your store is, um, having slow sales, the way to correct it is to only put in stuff that sells quickly and quickly adjust the stuff in your store. The thing you can do that will affect your sales the most is probably take the next day off and adjust every single listing that you have. Make sure the titles are right, keywords, lower your pricing to the market or raise the pricing to give a better perceived value. You really gotta get in there and research which platform it's gonna sell best on. You cannot only sell on eBay. 
You can't. I can't recommend that. I can't recommend you quit your job or you only sell on eBay. I can't because it's just it's too too risky. Um, so Vita is asking, you have to make 20K before paying government. You have to pay the government if you make $1. You're responsible for, for reporting tax. It's just most people don't unless they're forced to because PayPal will issue a 1099 for you to the government if you do 20,200 transactions or more. But you should, you should not think that way. I want everyone to make more than $20,000 a year on eBay. So to set your business up properly, and everyone, if you have a pen, write this down. Clear is better than big. You don't need a big reselling business. It just needs to be clear how much money you're making. When your spouse says, how much money are you actually making? If you can't answer, you're putting a huge, you're punching your relationship in the face if you can't answer that question. You have to know how much, because you would never take a job if they don't tell you how much money you make right? And, and your spouse wouldn't let you take a job that doesn't earn enough money. Or they, or, or they would be like, okay, that's cute, but how, what are we doing to get to that level of money we need, right? You have to have that. Um, Midgarden, what's up? Uh, it's your first year of reselling. Seriously, awesome. I consider reselling like golf. You can do it forever, okay? As long as you can source and you have the internet now, you can buy stuff online. So there's two things I want people to really focus on. The two skills, five years from now, when we're having this live stream, I want to have this conversation. And I want you to say, and I say, guys, what are you really good at? I want you to answer two things. I'm really good at selling on Amazon, and I'm really good at sourcing online. That's it. If you have those two skills, you'll probably be doing really awesome. Um, you make less than 20K to not pay. That's just not true. You have, to, you have to report your taxes even if you make $1 profit. Most people just don't. That doesn't mean it's optional. It's not optional. If you sell, if you buy something, if you buy AirPods for $90 during a sale and sell them for $140, and after everything you make $20 profit, you owe the government on that $20 of income. Um, What's my thoughts on Salvation Army and Goodwill selling on eBay? I mean, Mr. Flashtone, the largest eBay stores, a lot of them are charity shops or thrift stores already. That has been going on forever. That's not new. Um, Goodwill of San Francisco has 150,000 feedback. Okay, they're enormous. There's, it's a seven-figure store. The one in Orange County, California, is a $10 million store. How do I feel about that? That's, I would do the same thing. If I owned a, a, a thrift store, I would, I would be like, you do not let anything profitable make it to the floor. That's how I would do it. Um, I would be like, everything in the store is a dollar for the junk. Everything that's good, online. That's how I would run Goodwill if I was there. I would not let anybody, I would let resellers make zero money. Why would I let you guys make the money if I got the inventory for free? Goodwill just, they only hire like ex-convicts, so of course they have to lower the bar so you can go in there and find your, your amazing finds. But if I was running the thrift store, I would run it <laughs> way more strict. I would not let the good stuff come out there. I would not do that. Um, Kanye got 68 million. Okay, let me take a break. All right, take, take a, everyone, take a deep breath, including myself. <sighs> Guys, most of you have an income problem, not a saving tax problem. You have to make a bunch of money so that you have a huge tax bill. That's good. That means you earned a lot. Um, what's up, Adventures in Reselling? Can we open our use our own Goodwill? Definitely. There, are, there are two things I really like. I like people who set up those bins to collect goods so they get it before it goes to Goodwill, and I like the people who open their own thrift stores. The harder it is to start, the more stable your business. I can give you guys a guaranteed way to make money: just McDonald's. Or buy an apartment complex. You have a really low chance of it not working. It's just expensive and hard to do that, right? But if I were like a guaranteed way to not very make very much money is list two pairs of clothing, list two clothing items from your closet that you never wear. That has like a 1% chance of success versus buying a McDonald's has a 99% chance of success, right? It needs to be harder. Don't do things that are super, super easy. Re, what's up? Re saying, how do you learn to sell online? Just start. Find stuff around your house. List it. Don't buy anything until you do that. Please, save your money. Don't buy a course, even though I have one for 35 bucks that you can buy. Don't buy it if you're just getting started. Sell stuff around your house first. 
buy it if you want to make like a side hustle income. Don't do it when you're just starting. Don't buy a lighting kit. Just buy stuff that you're going to resell, sell stuff around the house using your cell phone. Get an iPhone 6S Plus or, or higher. They're like $200. Um, you, can, you can do a cheaper phone. I just recommend the iPhone because of the speed. Um, you're not paying anything to the IRS, period. Nice. Um, Brandy is saying you've won some good stuff for reselling from Goodwill store. I, yeah, that's true. Goodwill does have an online store for people that don't know. Shop Goodwill. Um, but I'm just saying personally, if I was running Goodwill, everything good, you would never see it. I would never let it get to the floor. Um, let's see. Yeah, everyone smash the like button. Thank you, Mandy. Um, but going back to the is there room for everyone to resell I I think so. Um, right now, there's a third of people who earn some type of side income. Um, that's pretty powerful to know. A third of people earn some type of side gig income, and that number is going to move towards one half. So one half of people will earn some type of income online, and I feel like the vast majority of it will be online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, thrifting, garage sales. It's going to be e-commerce because e-commerce is so easy. People, easy to start. Um, people around the world can drop ship. They can be like Duncan. He, he sells like stamps and um, ephemera. Is that the right word? Correct me if it's wrong. The, the paper stuff, ephemera. Um, there's people who sell coins and currency. That's really stable um, because obviously there's some inherent value in the coins. Uh, if you flipped hundred dollar bills, I flipped um, I flipped a hundred dollars for a two dollar loss. <laughs> so you need to know what you're doing. Like you, you, like I didn't understand the currency fees. I thought the currency fees were less. They were like um, currency is one of the, the least fees categories. I think it's six percent. Um, but you need to know what you're doing. Like and. I like investing in stuff that has inherent value. So I sold the $100 bill, I think, for $116. That's why I lost $2 because I didn't factor in the shipping cost correctly. So you need to know what you're doing, obviously. But buying stuff that has inherent value, coins, currency, gold, it's safer. Goodwill prices are getting higher. Yes, and you shouldn't let that stop you. Got to keep going. Um, Goodwill prices are getting high. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Is dropshipping dying? No. Dropshipping is not dying. It's just more popular because you can do it in any country. Okay. So that's it. I don't want to do stuff that can be done in every country. I only want to do stuff that can be done in my neighborhood. I'm looking for unfair. I want an unfair advantage because... Because that's how life works. I know this is going to trigger people, but life's not fair. I want to be on the unfair side. I don't want to be on the fair side. I want to be like, I live next door to um, a cookie factory, and I don't have to pay shipping. I can just walk over there and get the box and ship direct. And I actually pay their mail copy room girl, um, whatever, uh, $100 a week to let me know what kind of stock is coming through, whatever. I want something unfair. I want information that only I know. Um, holy crap, this is a, what is this guy's name? Um, there's a really popular English YouTuber. I, I forgot his um, name, but he's a, he's a podcaster. But he said, I don't want working class information. I want elite level information. He nailed it. I don't want to know the news. I want to know like the people who are playing the news. Okay, as an example, I just realized one of the reasons why my YouTube channel works is there's a lot of people who hate me. There's like, I get, there's this one guy that leaves a racist comment almost every day. It's like, he'll create a new thing and be like, hey, w whatever racial slur, Asian slur, like every day, he just makes a new account to do that. I just realized that People intentionally trigger these people to help themselves stay relevant as big YouTube channels. I was listening to Logan Paul talk about he has like something like uh, 8,500 dislikes a video or something, something crazy. Like people get sad when they have like 10 dislikes on their video. He has like thousands of dislikes. He calls that like his um, viral army because he's like, what happens is 
All I have to do is make one stupid comment per video and all 8,500 of those people will make a video about me. And that's why I make millions of dollars on YouTube. I have to thank those 8,500 people and take them out to dinner because they're making me relevant every day. People are talking about something and they're taking something out of context and switch. Like for example, here's a perfect example. Reselling is easy. If I were to say that, and I do say that sometimes because it's easier than other businesses. Okay, meaning if you sell Sony cameras, please, Sony did the heavy lifting, okay? They made the camera. They invested millions of dollars into making it. Celebrities use Sony cameras. They've been around for 50 years. They did the heavy lifting, okay? You found one at a garage sale for $2 and sold it for $500. They did all the work. That's why I'm saying reselling is easy. It's, but the thing is, somebody's going to be triggered by that and be like, no, it's not easy. I've been doing this for 20 years the same way, and I can't pay my bills. Like, oh, it's, it's tough. It's challenging. Being, but, but also, that being said, um, after watching all these videos um, on how to make YouTube work, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I need to take YouTube way more seriously. Everyone's time is really valuable. I don't want to waste people's time. I want people to get information, use it, make extra money. <sighs> it's crazy. Um, let's see. Is that same guy trolling you? It, it's, I, I don't know. It's just, it's, to me, it was, it's like, um, I ha I really feel like I have brass balls because the, the confidence I have now from repetition of learning something new is so high. I feel like I could lose my YouTube channel and I could just become an electrician. I would be fine and just, just become an electrician. Um, and I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't go on the YouTube on electricity, an electrician channel and be like, how do I start being an electrician? I would never ask that question. I would watch a bunch of them and write down what I think it looks like and go to that person and say, what are some local resources you use to find jobs or something? Or like, I would try to get an internship. I wouldn't ask the easiest question like, is there still money in being an electrician? Like, yes. Um, what are the size of the boxes I'm using for my inventory? Um, 16 by 14 by 24, um, and 18 by 12 by 24. It's on, um, I don't think I've posted that recently. I'll, I'll upload a, a video of my new inventory system, um, with, cause I have two different box systems. Um, uh, family flips have the haters yet. Yeah. You guys don't have the haters yet, but you guys will, especially once you get on TV. Um, let's see. La I know. I wish I should do this more often. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It was, let's see. Is it still buffering? It's still, okay. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's not buffering. Um, let's see. Yeah, I got the Travis Scotts. Travis Scotts are dope. I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to resell them, but okay, here's another, here's another um, hack for YouTube or for eBay. Ready? Um, this, is, this is advanced. Okay, so smash the like button and a little bit like, I don't, I don't consider it sketchy, but like, um, okay, there's two different types of accounting. When you record cost of goods, you can either do cost-based accounting or accrual-based accounting. So what that means is, you can buy this pair of shoes. It was two hundred and fifty dollars, right? You pay two fifty. You record the cost right now. So let's say I made five hundred dollars in profit. I subtract two fifty for inventory. I record the cost now. This month I only have to pay two hundred and fifty dollars. I pay tax on two hundred and fifty dollars. Or I could not record the cost now. Record the cost of shoes later when I actually sell it, and. Um, I owe taxes on the $500 worth of profit, right? That's the difference. Um, so that being said, um, it's paying tax on 500 now or 500 later. Now what you can do and what a lot of resellers do and some really big sellers do is they just start buying expensive stuff to resell towards the end of the year and just recording the cost now. The only problem with that is later, if I were to record this $250 cost now, when I sell this next year for 600 or 700 or something, if I decide to resell it, I owe tax on the full amount. You can't deduct the cost of go the goods again. You can just do it one or the other. But one advanced tip for reselling is record all your costs this year for the inventory you buy and push it ahead. 
but just be careful because you don't want a massive tax bill when you get audited which may happen if you do a lot of volume reselling, they're gonna ask you to prove where that stuff comes from. I'm not an expert in tax, but I do feel like I have a really good grasp on it. And a lot of it came from not your dad's CPA. So Mark, reach out to him. He has a book called Reseller Finance that I think I have linked on my videos. Um, it's $20. It, it's worth it because you obviously understand how to do it. He's an actual CPA, so I, this, this show is for entertainment purposes only. Do not um, use your life savings and do what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. Just sharing what my personal experience. Um, Duncan is saying, uh, am I getting rolling blackouts? No, not on eBay, but where I live, I am. Uh, I live in Northern California. There's constantly fires. Um, simple fit life. With real estate and debt-free financial independence, yes, this is this is so crazy. I didn't know about fire, retirement, retiring early, all that stuff. If I had known that in my twenties, I probably still would have been stupid in my twenties, to be honest. Um, after visiting New York and reliving, I used to live in Manhattan after college. I wouldn't have redone it another way. I'm I'm like I'm paying the price now for not saving money in my twenties, um, and it's going to take me longer to become financially independent than. Um, if I had started in my 20s, obviously, but I still think it was worth it because I don't have FOMO and I am not itching to meet, um, oh, is it glitchy? Let me see. All right, I'm gonna take off. Looks like it's not working. <laughs>